Everyone's going to see your passcode now. I'm not going to. I'm going to see it. Okay. And, and I just want to thank everyone for their help before. Like, I've had lots of volunteers and uh, people who back me on Kickstarter, and I really appreciate that. So I'm calling it TH just because um, I think there's a downside to sticking a year, hard coding a year in every edit of the video. Um, I'll just do a quick recap of Thorium Remix 2011. Went through uh, quite a few hoops securing copyright and trying to make something that would... Uh, be favorable to a distributor so it could get on iTunes and Netflix and stuff like that. Despite being able to get it on iTunes uh, and Amazon, it's far more effective on YouTube. And I'm sure that makes a pretty obvious sense is that if it's free on YouTube, more people are going to watch it. Also, I was not able to monetize it on iTunes and Amazon, uh, which is only important because you monetize something like that. It kind of keeps you moving forward with the next iteration. But I mean, it's important to know that YouTube was popular and so you know, that, that's where the most good was done and that's where I'm focusing in the future. What's interesting though is that the most propagated instances of Thorium Remix 2011 on YouTube were not my own. That's other people copying it and posting it online and that's interesting. We're going to get into that in a bit. Then I ran some Kickstarter campaigns so I could make a better version and there's some discrepancies between what I was trying to do and what I ended up doing. Kickstarter pitch had a lot to do with DVDs. DVDs are no longer really a big thing, right? They're handy to have some out in the lobby. They're handy to hand to people, but it's not really what people want to buy anymore. I know I sure as heck don't want to buy any more DVDs. Um, and it was not really worth the effort to go on Am iTunes and Amazon. Going forward, that's good. I know that I don't really want to waste a lot of effort trying to pursue those channels. I thought that CGI would be very important, computer graphics. And as nice as it would be to have that, I find that that's not really what's bottlenecking me. I'm more bottlenecked on the challenge of telling a good story uh, than rather having good visuals. Now I'd like to have good CGI and stuff like that, but it's just, you know, you can come in later with good CGI. You don't have to hold up a documentary because you need to better, like, better communicate a, a moment visually. And then uh, I had a lot of trouble trying to tell a story. That's just like, hey, am I a good storyteller? Probably not. There's four pretty poor chapters and then some good chapters following those. So 2014, going forward with what I've learned from that, play to the strength of YouTube's allow an iterative approach and helpful analytics to locate maximum suck and uh, remove and fix that suck. So I can see when people stop watching the video. And if you use iTunes or Amazon or a DVD, you'll never get that information. There's simply information available on YouTube as a person trying to make a good video that you'll never get access to anywhere else. And remix by others is probably means by which meme will spread to a given audience. So that's letting other people take what you've done and improve on it or, or even market it slightly differently. So here's an example chapter right now. This is what the viewership looks like. It kind of rolling at around 300 views a day. You can see there's a spike when I first release it and then it's not popular and then it sort of gains in popularity. Okay, so here's people viewing it. Ignore the green line. Um, the blue line is the important one. That's when people are presented with the video organically and they, of course, stop watching pretty quick, but that's very normal for a YouTube video. Most people are finding this because they're looking for something else and then the 25% get to the end. So that's, um, that's a pretty long video and 25% getting to the end, that's actually pretty decent. This is what it looks like uh, compared to other YouTube videos of similar length and you can see we're constantly above the average for uh, that length of YouTube video. Uh, I can tell you that 95% of the people who watch my videos are male. And here's what the, the release of a chapter looks like. One third across there you can see that there's another little color appearing, a spike in traffic. Um, it used to be there was only a few bands of colors representing different chapters and as time goes on it's like there's more and more bands and you know over the long, long course of time the, it's kind of an increasing total number of viewers. And here's the release of the molten salt reactor experiment chapter, you can see that this green chunk starts growing. What is the green chunk? When someone watches another video on YouTube and they're presented automatically with a recommended video, that's what that green was. And so these are the other videos people are watching. The second most popular one is someone having taken a copy, downloading a copy with a plugin, 
uploading it to their own channel and then they're putting these um, ads for other videos and you can see this is a conspiracy video guy. He's got mention of UFOs and stuff like that. So that's where a lot of people are coming from is the kind of conspiracy fringe because of this kind of behavior. Now is that a net positive or a net minus? I don't know. And this is someone who did a more legitimate remix. You can see at the bottom right it says created using YouTube video editor. That's pretty important. But uh, what he did was he put an ad on the front. You're looking at an advertisement. And this is the kind of thing that can go on on YouTube, right? If uh, you upload a video, you can try to put an ad in front of it and try to monetize it. That is also pretty important when you're trying to encourage people to spread an idea. So my announcement for today is that for all of the TH uh, chapters, I just enabled the remix this video feature. So that was been enabled in Thorium Remix 2011 all this time and that's where that, that's where that came from is I had the feature enabled. This guy used the feature and you'll see he's got a million and a half views. That's more than I ever got. So I'm not the most effective guy propagating this. Other people are more effective than me. When you click remix this video, you get a, an actual kind of dinky video editor right in YouTube itself. And you can, you know, kind of isolate a one moment in a video. Yeah, I shot that with my camera. Um, so anyway, that's just youtube.com slash editor. No one knows that. They don't have any obvious links to it, but it's pretty darn important. So that's how easy it is to put something together. Right now, there's 11 chapters. Some of them are pretty long. Some of them are short. But if you wanted to construct a brand new Thorium documentary, grab the chapters, bring them over, put them in whatever order you want. And right away, we've got a means of making it so that when someone watches a YouTube video, and we know that most people will stop watching a YouTube video within the first uh, 15 seconds. So what are we going to show them in that first 15 seconds? And the thing is there's a million different things we could show them in that first 15 seconds, right? It's like I can't work through all the permutations myself but anyone who's interested in video or has minions they can get to, you know, um, employees or something that want they should have someone experimenting with this, I would suggest uh, try get people on it. So when you create a video you can uh, then name it what you want. You can title it. You can add a description of what you want. You can monetize it with ads. That's probably why uh, so many people did that to the 2011 version and some people stole it to do it. Some people used the remix this video. But anyway, it's like it's important to allow other people to try and monetize it because even if they're not um, keen on thorium or molten salt reactors, well, they have another incentive that they should try to do that. So if anyone is going to remix this thing, here's some uh, key points. The title is really important. The thumbnail nail images you pick are really important. The first 10 seconds are really important. Shorter is generally better than longer. And the exact same message can be communicated using the same information, but the order in which you present that information makes a world of difference, right? You could start, you could have the same video. You could either start it with global warming as an issue, jobs are an issue, um, linear no threshold is bogus. There's a zillion ways to tackle it, and I'm not going to work through the per permutations myself. And one piece of information I don't know is does monetizing a video help or hurt? Because that guy who got 1.5 million views, he's got an ad in front of it. Now I would presume that that's bad and it adds bore people and it would scare them away, but I don't know what Google's doing. Maybe they favor videos that have ads in front of them because that's how Google makes money. Um, if you want, I can give you a copy of this stuff in high quality and you can use real video editing tools. You don't have to just use the YouTube video editor. But if you've never edited a video before, using the YouTube video editor is a great way to, to take a first crack at it. And let's just recognize that there's lots of different target audiences for this, right? I'm not going to be able to tailor a video to every single target audience. Uh, and does anyone in here actually understand marketing as a science? Like I'm not a marketing guy. I'm not a communications guy. It would be wonderful to have uh, someone who's like a domain expert look at these sort of problems, these basic communication problems and, and tackle it. Um, if you have a nuclear thorium MSR message that you want out that requires video, I ask you to please take a look at this footage and see how you can leverage it. Um, I like to think that maybe there's a percentage of the work you'd be trying to get done that's already done. Uh, see if you can leverage it. If you think something's missing, let me know. Like maybe you need it for yourself or maybe you just think the documentary needs it. Let me know and I'll try uh, look into developing that message. And uh, if you sit down and you watch this documentary, um, it's on thoriumremix.com, it's on YouTube. 
take notes as you watch it, you know, find the good moments, the bad moments. If you find one really good moment, you could just isolate that as a video for yourself and do whatever you want with it. If you think a chapter is good except for one moment of it is terrible, well you can take the first part before that, the part after it and pull it right out and make a, you can make a chapter that just doesn't have that moment in it. And uh, if it's okay to take a couple questions, maybe that's a good use of the next few minutes. Any questions for? Yeah. I just want to commend you for not a lot of info myself. And uh, for me, your stuff has done more to propagate the authority of movement to various friends of mine to help out and explain. Particularly for video, literally five minutes is what helps a lot. Okay, that's good to know. Then that's the guy, the one that the guy copied, which is perfectly fine. But yeah, he took the first five minutes out of a two hour documentary, made it a video, and obviously that's very effective, so that's good to know. Uh, thanks, but that's not a question. Um, do I understand you right that you're suggesting that um, anybody Speaking has the ability, like oh, anybody has the ability to, um, you might say, steal. A video from and put it on YouTube in a mix-up way that to suit yourself. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And when yeah. you say monetizing it, well, I mean, it sounds like a good idea that we should try to do it, actually. Yeah, well, I hope people try it. I mean, maybe it's easy or hard to, for people to do. I'm a video editor, so for me, it's not hard. But I mean, it can't hurt to try, right? Is there an instruction book for it or something? No, just go to youtube.com slash editor and see what you can figure out. Did you ever try to approach any real editors that are known for editing? Uh, no, I have not. I have just assumed they were busy and I couldn't pay them. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for all your hard work. And uh, I'm having a little trouble hearing this morning, but uh, it's probably my ears. And I'm not sure whether you said or not, uh, pe can people contact you? For, for advice and guidance in, in working through this process? If you're trying to figure out how to use an editor or use my footage, uh, just let me know if you have any trouble willing to put time into helping people as best I can. I'm trying to understand this YouTube editor. Okay, so I can link in existing clips. And can I exclude like a mi the middle one minute or something like that? Yeah, you, to do that you would just you copy it in twice. The same chapter, you put it in twice and you cut off the end and then you cut off the beginning and that's how you cut out a minute. It seems to be more tech savvy than the rest of us. How did you do the presentation on your iPhone? Uh, there's a program called Keynote that's free with all the new iPhones. Or the latest Keynote OS. Apple's version of PowerPoint. Yeah. And he's got tiny fingers. You should see them. <laughs> They're like toothpicks. Oh, well, thank you very much, Gordon. Okay, thanks.